board certified in internal medicine, in infectious diseases, and in intensive care medicine, Dr. Egerman has an established extended clinical and academic experience in tertiary referral centers, Geneva and Lausanne, Switzerland. He developed over the past two decades a sustained experience in the continuous improvement of the quality of care in critically ill patients. Dr. Egerman research fields include sepsis biomarkers, the prevention of catheter-related infections, empirical treatment of invasive candidiasis, and microorganisms targeted immunotherapy. He acts as consultant to several scientific committees and is regularly invited as a speaker at international meetings on critical care and infectious diseases. He published 150 peer-reviewed papers with an H index of 35. Active in medical politics, he has been elected to the Central Committee of the Swiss Medical Association. This is because sepsis reminds one of the, of the more severe complications uh, we see in the patient in the ICU. It could be linked to the reason of admission, so a severe infection with sepsis. Sepsis means uh, distant organ dysfunction, or it can be ICU-acquired, complicating uh, the problem for which the patient was admitted in the ICU. And over the past 20 years, we learned that we should diagnose and manage sepsis very aggressively to improve the prognosis of these patients. Okay, pancreatic stone protein is a protein mostly produced by the pancreas and the intestine. It was first described uh, as a function to inhibit the growth uh, and the nucleation of calcium carbonate crystals in the pancreatic juice, so nothing, to, to nothing linked with uh, sepsis. But 15 years ago, a team from Zurich described that these pancreatic stone protein rise two to three days in advance in trauma patients requiring ICU management that develops later on an infection or a sepsis. And this opened the way to more, uh, to, to study the potential of the use of these pancreatic stone protein in the field of infection or, or, or sepsis. After this first evidence in trauma patient that PSP may rise before the development of a sepsis or an infection, the several other studies demonstrate that the accuracy of pancreatic stone protein to diagnose infection or sepsis in patients with ventilator associated pneumonia, in patients after cardiac surgery, in patients after burn trauma, after inhalation injury, and in neonates may be useful. In most of these studies, PSP performs better than procalcitonin or C-reactive protein to identify patients with an infection or a sepsis. And the meta-analysis we do show that it performs better with a uh, ROC IUC uh, higher than uh, procalcitonin and than CRP. Yes, after all these studies showing the potential usefulness of pancreatic so stone protein, we perform a prospective observational studies showing that a regular measurement every day of the pancreatic stone protein in critically ill patients at risk of developing sepsis rose 42 to 72 hours before the clinical manifestation of a sepsis. Yes, in some of these studies and it was confirmed by the meta-analysis we do on these studies, combination of pancreatic stone protein with C-reactive protein further increase the ROC AUC and ROSE 0.9. And this was higher than the other combination, including procalcitonin with CRP.
this is a, a, a real problem. We progress in the management of sepsis by managing these patients very aggressively. Unfortunately, in many cases, we start antibiotics very early, as it has been demonstrated to save life. But in probably uh, half of the patients, uh, this was not required because it is not possible to confirm the diagnosis of infection or sepsis when it is suspected. And this may result in an overuse of the antibiotics, especially the broad spectrum antibiotics, and further contributes to the burden of uh, progression of resistance in antibiotics. Yes, we should use antibiotics as early as possible, but we should avoid antibiotic overuse. So in, in such situation, the use of an accurate biomarker may help us to prescribe antibiotics earlier, especially if a biomarker is demonstrated to raise before the, 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 the beginning of the clinical scenes of sepsis. And if the biomarker does not increase, it's probably possible to avoid the start of antibiotics. And the advantage of the pancreatic stone protein is that we can, we can measure it repetitively every 12 hours. For example, on the waste blood we are using to perform blood gas analysis and to start antibiotics. Uh, 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 e even if there is a biological confirmation of the clinical suspicion of the infection. We should improve the antibiotics use. And this can be due by guiding the start of antibiotics on biomarkers, especially if these biomarkers raise before the clinical uh, development of signs of sepsis. And if the biomarker has a sufficiently high negative predictive value, we can avoid to start unuseful antibiotics until we get more evidence that the patient will develop a sepsis and this can be due through the repetitive measurement of biomarkers, especially pancreatic stone protein in this case. Having worked uh, 20 years with the biomarkers of sepsis, I have a proposal uh, with uh, my colleagues. In a patient uh, with suspected infection, we have uh, the possibility to clinically evaluate the patient and we have a lot of scores showing uh, uh, dysregulated host response. And then we have the biomarkers and we have the pancreatic stone protein and the C-reactive protein because if we combine these two uh, biomarkers, we increase uh, the performance. So if the, um, if the, uh, the clinical evaluation suggests uh, that the sepsis is there and the biomarker is elevated, this is probably a proven sepsis. Then no doubt we have to start antibiotics to start support organ failures. And then we can, uh, we can de-escalate the antibiotics based on the procalcitonin like it has been demonstrated since 10 years now. Then if there is no clinical signs of sepsis, but a positive biomarker suggesting that uh, there is potentially an infection, we can start the antibiotics, monitor organ function and serial biomarker measurement to confirm that antibiotics are needed. We can also de-escalate if there is no clinical signs of infection that will develop the after. Then if there is a clinical sign suggesting a sepsis, but the biomarker are not increased, probably the sepsis is only possible. And then we can decide not to start empirical antibiotics and to regularly measure the pancreatic stone protein and the CRP, uh, the CRP to guide antibiotic start when the biomarker will rise. If both the clinical signs and the biomarkers are negative, sepsis is very unlikely. 
and these situations do not require empirical antibiotics and we can just monitor organ function. Then these patients will remain at risk to develop infection and sepsis. And then we can monitor and we can measure regularly the PSP and the CRP to try to get a pre-symptomatic diagnostic of sepsis.